Hello there, and welcome to Women's Business. My name is Dr. Mary Michelle Cross Smith, known to most as Dr. Daycare, and this is my co host, Amy Vogel. We would like to welcome you to our mentoring program designed to educate our community on issues facing working women. We will be speaking to our guests in the areas of art, sciences, health, education, law, medicine, politics, community service, military, and business. The goal of the show is to provide information that comes only from personal experience and to pass this information down to our daughters, nieces, neighbors, family, and friends. Much of the content will relate to the guest speaker's journey in their profession, what they have learned most about this process, and what they wished they had known before this journey began. Since women-owned businesses are the fastest growing sector of our economy, my guests will close with what lesson they would like to pass on to the viewing audience. Hello there. Thank you for joining us on Women's Business. We are honored today to welcome Carrie. How are you? Very good. Thank good. you. You are the author of a children's book called? Poofers. 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 I was like squishing and cuddling and holding your poofers. <laughs> so excited to learn more about poofers. Thank you. Thank Tell you. us a little bit about you. Sure. How you got from here to there. What? Right. Thank All about poofers. Sure, sure. So, well, as a woman in business, my business name is Carrie Bober Branding by Design. And Carrie what I Bober do is help, yes, I help businesses grow through telling their story through compelling graphic design pieces, whether yeah. that's a logo, business card, graphic card design, or trade show design, and it's anywhere mm -hmm. in between. And I'm also a children's book author and illustrator. And how that came out about was about five years ago or so, my niece used to call her dad a poofa. And I was like, what the heck is a poofa? So I started Googling it, and I could not find it anywhere. So I went to my sketchbook, and I started sketching, and these bubbly little characters started to appear. And so then a story kind of just started coming alongside the sketches. And after much evolution and refining, I now have these 11 positive 11. thought bubble creatures. Let's see. Oh, cool. There you go. Why 11? Because that's just what just I came up with. Came with the up with, got it. That was it. They There's say no people remember best. odd numbers more than even numbers. There may be more in the future. Yeah. And that we and actually my my co-author helped me. Uh, we're, we're thinking about where to go with this in the future and new books coming out. Also. So this could continue to grow. Yes, correct. All right. Yes. So they each have a, a poof of power. And so why they're positive thought bubble creatures is they're, they kind of like poof come into your head and give you ideas when you're going through a tough time. And for instance, we ha instance we have superhero Sammy, whose poof of power is courage, and Spotty Dottie, who's a little cheerleader, and hers is confidence. I like that. Thank you. And what do you have for adults? Because I think we could take it back to our <laughs> office or our homes. <laughs> One of my favorites us. is Soothing Sue. Oh, okay. And hers That's is comfort. That is oh, so, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. What a great way to teach yeah. children their emotions and their feelings and how to use them. Yes, yeah, in a, in a fun and vibrant way. Mm -hmm. uh, as a child myself, I went through some difficult times mm -hmm. and later was diagnosed with PTSD. So it, it means a lot, it, it makes my heart sing when I see other children look at this and, and be able to learn how to deal with, st with stress mm -hmm. and positive coping skills. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I've had success stories where a parent gave it to a child going through a divorce and a kid that was scared to go to school mm -hmm. and it's it's really helped them to move move past it. It gives them a visual way to kind of shift yes. their mindset. Well they have a feeling, right? right? But they don't know how to like explain it. Yes. And this might yeah. help them yeah. on that journey. Yeah, and it was really I mean, I'm a creative individual and so what was really helpful was my friend, Kelsey Latimer, who is a licensed pediatric psychologist. Mm -hmm. She saw I was working the, on this on Facebook, and she's like, how can I help? I really Aww. believe in this. I want to jump in. That is awesome. Yeah, and so she, she took it to another level, really, I think, had it come full circle to where it's really successful with the kids because now we have interactive pages. 
All right, so. Wow. So you get your own curriculum kind of built in right into a book. Right. So it, it, in the beginning, the first part introduces each one and their specific power. In the second part, it's little mini stories and helping kids through little adversities. And at this part, the kids, I ask them when I'm doing a reading, which one would you choose and why would you choose it in that situation? Yeah. And the kids just really light up and they feel empowered, I think, to share you know, their stories <coughs> and why. And then at the very end, we came up with a write your own poofa oh, wow. story. And this could be used by teachers or parents where it asks a number of questions like, is there something that went on in your life recently? Tell us about it. You know, which one would you have used to help you get through this and why? So yeah. I'm coming from an early childhood perspective, so I'm, I'm going to go out two, three, and four year olds. Yep. But one of the things in 47 years in the profession, one of the things we do training constantly, which is great. Our staff is absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. But one thing that caught on many years ago is when you talk to a two, three, four year old, and a lot of the teachers would use your words, use your words, use your words. And I used to be in my office as a director going, I'll have to really retrain that teacher afterwards because when you're talking to a three-year-old, mm -hmm. they have sometimes no words to use. Yeah. The words yeah. aren't there. Yeah. The emotions are there. Imagine if you could say, go and pick out how you're feeling. And they're like, oh, right now I just need a, uh, someone to hug me. You know what I'm saying? So these right. could actually be little kids' words. Yes. You know, I yeah. can see that right. clearly, completely clearly. I was talking to uh, Lisa at your child. I like talk the same way when you do it. So funny. Yeah, Tracy. And she said they have like a thinking corner. And she we said, do. wouldn't this be great if we could give them something like this? Yep. You know, to not feel maybe like they're being punished or something, but they could actually have something Correct. to physically mm -hmm. and visually look at. Mm -hmm. Because know, if a child can choose something like this mm -hmm. and it has a meaning toward it, mm -hmm. now the words can't flow right. in their own time. Right. Yes. It's a great idea. Thank you. I'm just curious. I'm. Who's your seamstress? Me. I, no. I've oh learned how to God. sew. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm an was... illustrator. I'm a painter. And now my newest thing is I just, one of my girlfriends Check this came out, over Amy. last Look year. Look at this. It looks like it was like, what? Well, no, that's I'm totally amazing. impressed, really. Oh, thank you. Really? Yeah, that's thank like you. some good sewing Do you make there. these and you sew them together? I do. I make them handmade and ship <laughs> them out. I actually have three I'm shipping out this week. That's wow. amazing. Yeah. Yes. I can yeah. see this manufacturing company that's starting. I can that's like amazing. visualize well, it. In the future, this is uh, you that's know, the goal right That's there. the goal. We have this is the simple, quite easy one to make. And this one's a lot more time consuming. But maybe yes. as I grow and take off, I can have these produced yeah. professionally. Yeah. <laughs> So that's impressive. But when I read the book, I use the, the actual so characters. Absolutely great. Um, yeah. And here's oh, they're quite another the superhero, oh Sammy. Mm. That's very oh, cool. Wow. An adventurous Abby. This one is named after my niece who inspired me to write. Oh, she yay, must Abby. Love that. Yay, yeah. Abby. Shout out for Abby. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you. So at the end of the story, when I'm doing a reading, we, we do. We fill out uh, the story and say how they help kids, and then I give them coloring pages where they can, they have so much fun coloring it and coming up with their own words. So, for instance, like these are just a couple examples. This one wrote, "You can do anything," Aww. and this one again, "You can do it." You go, girl. So it's it. just really cool to see what the kids write. And actually, most recently, my cousin's daughter, I read it. I did a reading to her. And she loved Soothing Sue, the comforting one. And she colored her in and she wrote no monsters because she was afraid of monsters. monsters. And yeah. she actually hung it up on her wall. Oh, in that her is bedroom. great. So, to wow. help it off. so really, it's it's kind of showing kids that like, they already have this inside of them mm -hmm. and how to use it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's all inside the child. Mm -hmm. It's just getting it out of the yes. child. And you yes. have found a medium to do that. That's Thank amazing. You. Wow. It's like when people say, don't be mad. To, it's like, well, they are. So. <laughs> yeah. We can't tell them to not be. They right. are, and that's okay. Yes, yes it is okay. Yeah. Help yeah. them get through it. Help yeah. them get to the other side You're of that. You're going to have your good and bad days. Yes. You know? We're, We're humans. human beings. Right, mm -hmm. and it's just how how do you bounce back from that, that's you know, it. learning how, uh, how one, as, as a business owner, one of the things I've learned, and I know one of your questions is, like, what would you tell other people? Or, yeah. You know, and for me, I heard some really great sayings is to fail fast. And fall seven, fall seven times, get up eight. Mm -hmm. You know. Wow, Aim, I could, I, I could put that in. Those, yeah. That's something yeah. I wish I learned, you know, I years like ago. Is changing your I mindset can go put to seven. that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You just took a whole lot of guilt off my shoulders. <laughs> let me tell you. Oh, thank you. If I fail 
fall seven fall and get up eight. Yeah. Wow. Just keep getting yeah. up. It's just, just encouraging. Just keep getting up and keep mm -hmm. on going. That's yeah. beautiful. And if you fall again, just get keep back up. You know, because failures really are just the pathway to success. Yes, I'd say. Yeah. It's yes. a life yeah. lesson, right? goals and going forward. Yeah. And if kids can learn these things, I think becoming mentally strong these days at a young mm -hmm. age yes. is really helpful. I guess things that I wish I learned, you know, and you have today's era of social media and bullying and oh, all this stuff world. and just like let's mm. you know mm. just teaching kids strength. to cope I think yeah. is just so important right because <coughs> when they don't learn that skill and something does mm -hmm. adversity come towards them mm -hmm. they can't get through it yeah and they're stuck, stuck. Yeah, and I feel so bad if they could just learn how to cope through it. Right. It's not as bad as you thought it was. Right. Yes, it's traumatic. Yes, it's not great. And, mm -hmm. But we're gonna, you're going to get to the other side. It's going to mm -hmm. be okay. Right. Yeah. And the other concern I have, too, the young children seem like they're nurtured. And every child is nurtured, but I'm saying parents have using the word control loosely, but more visual, more control, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. I really get concerned when the children in middle school and high school, because if you went to high school and you got bullied on the bus, Mm -hmm. You know that bus ride is coming to an end, mm -hmm. and you can go in school, get a counselor, talk to your parents, hopefully about that. But social media, the bullying can go on and 24 on seven. and on. 24-7. Yeah. Yeah. And someone else could have picked up on something else. Right. I have three teenage young grandsons, and every, every access I can get, even by they're able to go to eat, any way I can get to them, and the mm -hmm. number one conversation I have with them is their social media. Mm -hmm. And no matter what people say, no matter how they say it to you, and... and their parents are parents, they're human beings. I was a parent, I wasn't around sometimes. I'm like, Grandma will always be here. You have my text. You know what I mean? They have to know they can go to a, some adult somewhere, right. the school counselors, a teacher they trust. Or know but how to so, shut it off. Or know too. how to shut it off. Absolutely. I think that yeah. becomes an issue. Like, yeah, because they it just, see it and then they're like, oh, I'm going to shut it off, but then they go back to it. Right. Yeah. And it's there's like no way to yeah. escape. It's almost like yeah. you're. I mean, it, being bullied it, online. It's bullying. I mean, even adults deal with pressures and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. I mean, I use these guys, you know. Yeah. To, boost up my self-esteem sometimes I'll fit I'll I'm a visual person mm -hmm. I'll think of them it's like poof, you know yeah. here mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. and you know it's just giving parents teachers kids yeah. tools for their tool belt mm -hmm. you know to well it's a good tool for your tool belt plus you can actually hug it too yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> it's so not pillow, hanging hot on the shelf no. yeah, yeah my mom's really. gonna get a set for her bedroom <laughs> <laughs> you know it's my bedroom I think I have this one's going out I you know um I mean, this one's going out actually this week uh, spotty dotty it's the only one i have i'm going to be ordering more because i'm actually running out uh i just got an email yesterday morning and it was a woman in rhode island i had a article in the Pawtucket times recently and so she heard about it she bought it for her grandchild in virginia and she went down to babysit her granddaughter recently and her granddaughter said it's my favorite book and she brings it to school regularly Aww. And the grandmother was like, thank you for bringing this and teaching kids uh, positive ways mm -hmm. to deal with their feelings. Mm -hmm. And she was wondering if I had a Spotty Dotty character because that was her granddaughter's favorite and oh, I didn't have it on the wow. website yet. But I just finished it and got it up yesterday and she, awesome. she already bought Fantastic. one. So it's going out. And um, she was going to share how, how it's helping you know, her grandchild. Absolutely. That's amazing hearing it. So. It's a good way for you to grow in another state too. Yes. No, another teacher gets it, feels it. Yes. Really likes it part of their curriculum. They will contact you, mm -hmm. and that's another part of being a <coughs> an author and illustrator. If anyone's watching the show, like, why don't you tell the highs and lows of that, and how long it took you to come up with an idea? So, I mean, I know sure. how you got the idea, but to really create these ideas. Yeah. Uh, so it probably started back in 2013, okay. and I I was starting to get into like, you know, I think it'd be really fun to write an author or a children's mm -hmm. book. And at the time, I I started writing and illustrating one, but never really got anywhere. I guess it didn't really speak to my heart and. Mm -hmm. And so in 2013, that's when my, my niece was calling her dad a poofa, and <laughs> that's when I started sketching. So probably about three to six months of sketching and a um, yeah, couple of years of uh, putting it on the computers. I mean, yep. these were like really basic at first, even just as a designer, making the width of the lines a little mm -hmm. thicker here than here, really fine tuning it. You know, I published it, self-published it on Amazon in yep. 2016. I was, uh, then I took a little bit of, of a break. I never really tried marketing it. I guess I was almost a little scared myself or put to put myself out there, yeah. you yep, know, I get it. to get totally. over that. And now the beginning of this year, I moved here. I've gone through some transition. I'm around my family and I'm like, you know what? This, this needs to be out there. I'm just going for it. Good. So yeah. I'm just, the beginning, I was like, how do I market this book? And that's a creative thing that <coughs> I like. just being a business owner, you're mm -hmm. always being creative. Like, what am I going to mm -hmm. do next to market it? And I started with a list of four things at the beginning of the year, and I was like, well, just 
take one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Just keep, you know, one step. Don't get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. oh, how am I going to do this? Keep it simple. And, and that list has grown to like an Excel spreadsheet of all these things. And I'm getting ready to do the SCBWI uh, International Children's Book Author and Illustration uh, Conference in Springfield, Mass. in May. Uh -huh. And I'm actually having the, man, the book reviewed by someone in Simon & Schuster. So, well, you know, that's exciting. So that's every right. month I'm trying to set something mm -hmm. up, you know, whether it's a, a reading to a children or uh, I'm looking professionally for an agent right now. I mentioned I did self-publish it, but I'd like to get yeah. an agent to take it to the next level mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. reach mm -hmm. different people, you know, to reach the masses. Because I've seen the good it's brought, yeah. and I, that's where I think service is so important to me. It makes my heart, like, so happy mm -hmm. to see it helping people. And oh, absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah. And that's really what I want. That's yeah. amazing. Now you started off as graphic designer. Yes, yes. And did you ever expect your journey to take you to this? <laughs> you're still just graphic designing but in a whole new realm of way of doing it. Right. No, I guess I didn't, you know, I've just followed the path as it's appeared. Mm -hmm. I, I started off, um, I've always been into art since I can remember when my mom used to have to take away my my crayons when I was a kid because I would write <laughs> on the walls. And when I was six, I was the first young artist of my school, oh, Johnston, wow. Saradaya Barnes Elementary School. Shout out, yeah, shout, shout out. out. I love shout outs. And great school, great teachers. And so from there, they actually gave me scholarships to Rhode Island School of Design. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Yes. Yeah, so I, how old, how old I was six years old. Six years oh old. Gosh. Yes. And those were some of my best childhood memories. And... We, I took a young artist program, and they were Saturdays. I think they were three hours. Yeah. And so much fun. Uh, then I fast forward. I ended up going to college, Plymouth State University, mm -hmm. and yeah. became a BFA in graphic design. Graduated actually top of my class for that and won the, the artist award. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. And, and so I just... Yeah, and then I worked for other companies. I worked as a at a print house. I worked at a art direct as an art director at a yoga retreat in Sedona, Arizona. Oh. And an ad firm in Flagstaff, Arizona, and some companies in Asheville, North Carolina. And then when the economy took a dip, um, I got let go from a couple jobs. And mm -hmm. you know, my ego kind of was a little hurt yeah. at the time, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was just a sign of the times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Sign of times. And that's when I decided mm -hmm. to. Say Business. want to hug one of these yeah. and say my yeah. ego's hurt right. and guess yeah. what and right. poof yeah. it's a sign of the times exactly. it is exactly you couldn't just move forward it's not me it's I a sign now? of the Let's times right. yeah. 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 this is brainstorm norm and he is uh the creativity one so there what can go. i do next you know? what can i do next and that's when i i um decided to start my own business in 2012 wow and just kind of found my own way and, and went to networking groups and this and that and and so I've helped people grow their own businesses with logo design, and that's one of my favorite things to do, yeah, too. Uh, it's like creating a piece of artwork for people, for people's business. Uh, and then, but I've, always, I've, I've done painting, I've done shows mm -hmm. for painting, and this and that. So I've always been a fine artist, too, in heart, at my that's heart. Amazing. And, wow. um, and it's been your whole life, basically. Yeah, yeah. So you've had passion life. since you've been a kid. Yes. And you followed it through. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, you, um, when you started the book, you said you worked with a co-author? Yes, this is uh, Dr. Kelsey Latimer. She actually grew up behind my house in Johnston, Rhode no Island. Way. Yes, <laughs> she li now lives in Florida, but uh, we've just kept in touch. And we used to study together in high school for exams and just have the best time. And we just have a great synergy yeah. when it comes yeah, to working absolutely. on this book. Yeah. I mean, she pushed these characters further. She was like, what about... You know, Spotty Dottie, what if we gave her pom-poms? Or what if Smiley Riley just had these big teeth, you know? And I was like, oh, that's great. You know, we just have so much fun working on it together. Now, did her expertise help with the emotional end of, like, oh, completely. some of the stories? Yes, yeah. Because I'm sure she had her own experience to put in there from what she's done in her oh, work. Definitely. Yeah, she works now, I believe, at the Discovery. They're a hospital, Discovery Centers. Mm -hmm. And they're actually going to start promoting this book on their social media so, uh, across the country. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, but her exp expertise definitely helped, um, again, in creating the interactive parts. She's, you know, with that and the story about how the children can write their own story at the end. I'm, I mean, it's just legitimate, like, psychologists helping me out here. You know, I'm the, I did a lot of the creativity. Mm -hmm. and, and, and coming up with a lot of, it's a rhyming story, mm -hmm. right. um, coming up with a lot of that. But then she came and just professionally <coughs> took it to that, yeah. Yeah. you know, like, I don't know how to say, but just 
to that level of professionalism mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it can really be trusted to help kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And the truth, as you said, it's, syn it's synergy. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. plus one equals three. Yeah. When you guys created this, it was probably bigger than you expected, Yes. which is amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other piece of it, too, I'm checking in on, um, when you do a curriculum like this and you get them kids involved, eight, nine years old, writing what they feel afterwards, and you might have, but I don't know if you have, have you ever thought if they wrote something very difficult mm. and said that, you know, the older brother is beating them up or something? Mm -hmm. um, is there something in the book that gives a credence to say if this is happening to dial 1-800-CHILD type there of thing. There is not yet, you know. There's sometimes children just write out their heart, especially yeah. after they've had a cuddly, wonderful inspiration. Right. There's a part where it just says, tell somebody that you trust Great. Uh, right. about this. So maybe they don't trust somebody that's really close, but they trust their teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? super. So, and their teacher's going to know yeah. what to do. Yeah. What to do. So there's a protection piece for right. them, which is fantastic. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, even if it's in the school system that this gets into. Exactly. The schools mostly know what home. to do with yeah, it. Yeah, they're, they're going to see trained. that. And maybe yeah. it's going to, like, yeah. you know, bring something out that they yeah. might not know of. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. otherwise. So who, you're extremely creative. Thank who you. inspired you? Do you have anyone, one or two or a few people that have? Well, my grandmother, she is an artist. Okay. Yes, yeah, she's still alive. She's 83 years old. Oh, that's wonderful. Grandma Fiorio. And she's a beautiful soul. She's so cute. She still wears like leopard print and oh, cut off it. shoulders. And she uh, she raised five kids. And then she started a business of her own, a real estate appraising business. And my mom actually was, she doesn't think she was creative, but she had a ceramics business when oh, I was a yeah. child. And so they, I saw some strong independent women running their own yes, businesses. And mm -hmm. that, you know, I didn't even think about it till the other day when I was reviewing your questions. And I was like, who? did make me want to go into business and then yeah. I was like you know I think I must have picked that up and, yes. and that was really cool to even figure that out from reading your questions mm -hmm. so my grandmother I mean she has beautiful paintings around around her house and I would say she's probably one or you might just I guess you they say you just get it yeah passed yeah. down from generations it's like a gene type so of thing isn't it? I think it is because yeah. we, we, no we don't have and that and I think I think <laughs> art helped me as a, almost like art therapy as a mm -hmm. child going through oh, some yeah. stuff I would just delve into my artwork, mm -hmm. drawing, or whatever, and it would just be an escape or a peace mm -hmm. of mind that just was so... Yeah, be creative. It's, it's mm -hmm. just, yeah, it's what I love. So if you, someone is yeah. watching the show and they want to write a children's book, mm -hmm. any suggestions you can give them, like, this is how to get started, this is what you need to do, any suggestions? And, and I know that feeling. Well, I think, it. you know, I kind of am an author-illustrator. It just depends on what end you're mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. you know. I think... If you're a writer, just thing and fine tuning it. And there are things that I have found online, the, the manuscript wish list, and yep. that is a bunch of agents that you can reach out to if you mm -hmm. come up, you, uh, you come out with your professional written manuscript, mm -hmm. and then you can send it out to people. There's the SCBWI, which is an international group that teaches you how to write your manuscript professionally. I mean, they want it like double spaced yeah. and all oh, wow. like a sp specific way to do that. So that's one way. Uh, that's some words of advice I could give and just as an author or, or an illustrator combined just start sketching and and see where it takes you and but the I guess the professional ways would be the SCBWI mm -hmm. website is a good learning thing because um, you have a chance to meet other local people mm -hmm. too yes uh, yeah. and learn from them what to do and just just go for it, yeah. basically. <laughs> I think another piece too is it's almost like you got to put yourself on a timeline. You got to write your goals. Yeah. You got to put that yes. out there. And I think another piece is it worked. Yeah. For me, is you need to be able to report those goals to someone. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's hard when you you're a you're an entrepreneur, right. sole business yeah. person. Yeah. So you are truly in charge of yourself. Oh, yeah. And we have been yeah. brought up to like report to somebody. Yeah. So I yeah. found with my book, which you got yours done a lot faster than I've got mine. Mine's only like <laughs> right. three or four years old. So I was in my sixties before. Like, okay, I gotta yeah. do this. But those are some of the guidelines that I put in myself. Mm -hmm. Like, I will have goals. Mm -hmm. I'll carry these goals out, and I will report to someone. Somebody and to be accountable. So yeah, so I could be yeah. accountable too, right. you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I know, oh my God, it's May's coming up, and yeah. I've got to study. I would have ten pages into this right. book, and everyone's got their own way. But 
I just want to say do it. Just get the words down yeah. and just go for it. Yes. Uh, yeah, you're right. Having a timeline. I did have goals. I had set yep. times. I was mm -hmm. like, I want to have this self-published by September of this year. Yeah. And visualization. Well, it's, yeah, you, you know, do visualization. Yeah. Yes, I do that. And I can picture myself starting to read to people. And now I've done that, you know. Mm -hmm. And Good. it's like, wow. You yeah. know? And I was a, a kind of shy person, you know, yeah. a lot of my life. But I just keep going over those hurdles yep. and yep. growing and it feels mm -hmm. really good uh, so yeah I think timeline goals visualization all those are very mm -hmm. helpful and now the next goal is seeing this out there everywhere yeah doing it out there know? and yeah, so it sounds like it's gonna happen goals, like That's this amazing. year yeah. like what do I want to happen by this time you know, did you September. have people read it before you published it like did I did you, yeah. yes I also had my girlfriend edit it as well TC Rogers she works at Johnson and Wales director of online online classes and she helped edit the book um, nice. so and she she but I had a lot of people re read it and now moving here it's cool because I don't know many people back in North Carolina they were all like oh this is you know wonderful but they all knew me deeply and here I'm hearing people that have just met me and they love it so that's yeah. like so encouraging yeah. you know to keep going that's forward yeah. that's amazing yeah. Yeah. how's that feeling back to Rhode Island I love it. I love it. Everybody's like, the weather, it's cold. Oh, yeah, yeah. But there's beauty in everything. There's beauty yeah. in the beauty gray. In everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. you just yeah. have to see. You have to mindset. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And and being around my family. My niece is here, my brother, my mother. Oh. I have cousins yeah. and aunts and uncles. And it's, you know, it's just lovely being around Rhode family. Island's a boomerang state. You might leave, yeah. but you're always <laughs> That's what I hear. That's what I hear. <laughs> like, so, we so, only go out for yeah. a little bit, then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. let's come, come back. back. Yeah. Come on back. Yeah. Uh, and I love hiking. There's actually tons of hiking oh, and there outdoor is. things to do. And, it, you know. and you're close to the ocean, not that far yeah. from the mountains. Yeah. So. I love, and I, I want to get into cross-country skiing oh. and tubing and yeah. snowshoeing. So just take advantage of mm -hmm. a lot of fine things. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of fun things to do. Mm -hmm. I could do without the snow, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's so magical. <laughs> it's fine, yeah. really. I'm a kid at wow. heart, so I don't mind the snow. Yeah. I actually went out and built a snowman a couple of weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. That snow man yeah. going to be in your book someday? <laughs> maybe. Maybe a big poofy uh, yeah. bubbly Both snowman. Seasons, yeah. <laughs> you got a great concept going here. I mean, I've been in early childhood for many, many years, and mm -hmm. I can see this whole thing blossoming. Thank you. you really, you really got, you got yourself a niche. You really do. Mm -hmm. And it's Thank all you. about kids' emotions. And yeah. more than ever, people are talking about, finally talking about children and emotions. Like, children aren't supposed to have emotions, mm -hmm. and they, they should be, you know, Or we stop kids. them from having them. Oh, always we stop mm -hmm. them from having And like, mm -hmm. like you said earlier, don't cry. Mm -hmm. Well, they want to cry, so yeah, let them yeah. cry. Yeah. Have a cry. Mm -hmm. And then add something like this to they can actually speak their words. I think right. it's a great idea. A really good idea. Thank wow, you. congratulations. Thank you. So any, we're closing soon. Any words you want to share with the listening audience that you didn't get to share? I was just thinking something. Um, well, basically, I think following your heart, if you have any kind of dream at all, I, the my poof is in the back. It says, if the poofa can do it, so can you. And I believe <laughs> even kids, adults, we can all do it. Um, yeah, just keep following your dreams, you know. And you might have bad days, but just keep mm -hmm. moving forward. Mm -hmm. Keep moving forward and try not to get hung up. Mm -hmm. If anyone's watching, any teachers or families or parents yes. or grandparents, how how access your book if they wanted to purchase it? They can go right to my website. It's poofas.com. Poof, great, great. P O O F A S. Super. Yeah. Excellent. Thank yeah. you, Gary. You're great, welcome. Great show. Thank great you so show. Much. Thank you. You have a lot to offer. Thank you. So people who view this will get a lot out of this. Absolutely. Thank yeah, you. I'm trying to spread the word. Yeah, yeah we're going to do it for you. We're going to help you do this. Thank you very much. Thank you.